Yeah, we are seeing some new names today. And we have our regular participants as well. Hi, Shruti. Good evening. Hello, Neha. Hi, Vidya. Hi, everyone. Hi, Vidya. Hey, Geeta. Good evening. Hi, Geeta. So there are two Geetas, Geeta and Geeta Vijay. Hey, good evening to both of you. Geetika. Hi. Hi, Geetika. It's so nice, yeah, Vidya Neha. It's just like you're empowering all of us. Thank you. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, you know, we really look forward for this day uh, when the session happens. Uh, Me too, I, honestly. We really I'm, loving the, I'm loving the consistency, by the way. The way yes. I'm loving it. Yes, I like this whole momentum going. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much once again. Okay, so we, we, we still see people joining in. So let's let's start with our usual uh, ritual. So welcoming you all for yet another wonderful session with our own Neha today. And uh, so it's going to be uh, on a very, uh, you know, special topic, bonds. <laughs> and I'm sure as always, Neha is having uh, loads of uh, information to share with all of us. Uh, you know, break a lot of myths, enlighten us with a lot of new information. And yes, we're all going to be all set to start investing in bonds as well. So let's start with some icebreaker question, quick ones. Do you know how bonds work? Okay, so I'm also going to put this in the chat. Type in your answers. No worries, uh, Divya. I think Neha will help us, you know. <laughs> Get some information on that. No, no, okay, no idea. I repeat the question. Do you know how bonds work? And by the way, this is not James Bond, okay? Neither we know how he works, but then... A <laughs> uh, little bit of an idea. Great, Ramya. Geetika, no. No worries. Fixed income instruments. Okay, good. Any more answers? Okay, so here we go, the next question. Okay, so we have one more thing. Loans for companies or governments, that's from Rumika Sharma. And Aishwarya says similar to stocks, but with fixed duration. Let's let's figure out all this from uh, Neha's session today. Long-term safe investments with tax-saving benefits, but poor ROI. Okay, this is bond. AFH bond. A, I like this, Tita. <laughs> <laughs> I like a bit of humor. Um, yeah, something which bonds us. <laughs> that, amazing. Yes. yes. <laughs> that's that's so nice. Okay, so here we go. The next question. Have you ever invested in bonds? No. Okay. No. Yes. Okay. So Gita says yes. Not yet. Very good. I like that answer. Not yet. Yeah. Maria says no. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think this session is all for us to start investing in bonds as well. I'm sure we've all laid our hands in mutual funds, stocks. And in and this session, we are going to hear a lot about bonds from Neha. So, uh, Neha, I will quickly launch the poll for you. Yes, to, yes. Uh, uh, Farisha, may I request you to launch the poll? Yes, people. So, here you go. So, your responses will really help us, you know, curate sessions in a way that actually suits you. So the question is, do you think fixed deposit is a better investment than bonds? So we have uh, 
responses coming in we have about 60% of people almost 60% of them saying i'm new to this topic and would like to learn more welcome i'm sure you will definitely get some information and a lot more information in fact about bonds and we have people uh, saying yes i think mp is a better investment uh, there are also people about 20% of them who have uh, said that no bonds are better investment so let's figure it out from uh, neha session today thank you all so much over to you neha thank you thank you vidya all right welcome everyone to a brand new session on investing in bonds okay so this is an absolutely um, you know on like really let's say less spoken about topic like almost a virgin money topic uh, uh, which i'm going to touch upon and every time i do something which is for the first time or we're touching a new territory um we try to go right from the beginning right from the basics so today's session you know for some of you who mentioned yes we know um you might want to contribute extra you feel free to ask questions at the end but for everyone else i'm thinking of this as your first ever session in bond investing okay so i'm going to go right from the basics just the way i like to do it for those who are joining in for the very first time uh, who am i what is the company that i represent i'm neha singh founder of a platform called womanista that's how it's pronounced womani sta women money sisterhood and we're a platform which is empowering and enabling women since 2020 to take uh, better money decisions more financial become more financially confident um till now over 8000 plus women and counting i think this number is needs to be updated now that we've entered 2023 and um, two things that we do with a lot of confidence we do personal finance courses workshops and we also have a one on one consultancy for personal finance exclusively for women um so more about that at the end of the session again i repeat this in every session and those who are joining in for the first time you must remember that if you're walking in with any barrier around having a non finance background and that's why you are not great at managing money please drop that it's just an other skill that you can learn irrespective of your background uh and the other thing is that after working with us on many of our courses lots and lots of women have become first time investors so you can be one too it's just about staying the course and making that effort to acquire the skill right so that's a little bit about us that scanner which you see which everybody sees by the way is our instagram page in case you want to go in and check that out right so you can just scan it and you get you will get to our instagram page and we do keep putting up some content on that uh, regularly all right so that was to set the context let's get started with today's topic which is how do we start building a safe portfolio so i want you all to tell me what is low in a safe portfolio and what is high in a safe portfolio just put down words that come to your mind in the chat box what is low when i'm thinking safe and what is high when i'm thinking safe risk is low return would be low low risk whatever comes to your mind return is high what else so risk and return what else do you think a safe portfolio would mean what is low when i have a safe portfolio risk and reward risk and reward risk and reward come on guys let's get innovative debt safe equity high balancing what is low what is high what portfolio safe portfolio it says right there it's a safe portfolio when i build a safe portfolio what is low for me and what is high so you all said risk and return anyone else who wants to say something else risk low return low somebody says high return somebody says low return of course ideal portfolio risk grow and high return fixed returns okay i think i need to be three i'm going to be the creative one in the room today okay so when i'm building a safe portfolio apart from not inflation eating sorry beating uh, that's me uh, missing a beat there but literally inflation beating returns and low risk which you all got right drop in my investment so i invested 100 rupees the chances that this 100 is going to become 
that is the lower probability in a safe portfolio, right? And preserve my capital. That is my focus in a safe portfolio. That my at least my hundred rupees will remain hundred. Has anybody ever experienced this? You invest in a product and then you're like, oh my god, even my capital is gone, right? So in a safe portfolio, you want to make sure that your um, the capital at least is safe. The drop in that investment is safe. What else is low in a safe portfolio? I don't have to keep monitoring this portfolio, right? You with me? What is high? Maybe I'm looking for some regular source of income. There is an income which I know with some sort of assurance that this would happen, right? What is low? My expertise. When I'm building a safe portfolio, I'm not going to spend so much time and energy and figuring out what should I buy, what should I sell. I want a safe portfolio where it doesn't, doesn't require too much expertise. What is high? Availability when I need it. I told you, you've got to be innovative, guys. And the best, my most favorite, stress is low and peace of mind is high, right? When I'm looking to build a safe portfolio. Please always remember this. In my view, a lot of people run after return and they forget this very important part about managing money, right? You want to manage money in a way which makes you sleep well at night. Don't forget that. Whatever makes you sleep well at night would typically come from something called as fixed income products. One of you mentioned that at the beginning, right? These are products which can be considered as safe products in my portfolio, okay? This is not something which is very high risk. This is not something which gives me too much stress. This is not something which requires too much monitoring. This is not something where my capital will get reduced. Is that fair? Basic? All right. One of the products, one of the products, can you all tell me one product? which falls in this bucket, by the way, a fixed income product that you all know, like by heart, like it's been passed on to us for generations to generations. It's our legacy, correct. Yeah, the two beautiful words, FD, right? Savings bank is, yeah, I mean, it's not an investment as such, but yeah, FD is the one which we all know about, right? So we know about FD, but we don't know about Mr. Bond. We do know about Mr. Bond. See, I use the other bond because I prefer this bond. Uh, but jokes apart, what are bonds? Okay. Now, when I thought of this and I thought of how to explain this to you, I thought of one very simple, um, you know, simple word which comes to my mind. Have you all heard of Raksha Bandhan? Me and my Bollywood self. Anybody who's heard of Raksha Bandhan? What is that? It is a Rakhi. Yeah, but what is what does it represent? What does the Rakhi represent? Brother bond. Okay. Oh, actually, it's not a brother bond. It's a protection bond. Exactly. Right? It's a bond where one sibling, so traditionally it's done between brothers and sisters. Nowadays, uh, in my house, for example, it's done between siblings. Uh, so, uh, where one sibling promises to protect the other sibling, right? So, what is it? It's a bond of protection. What is a bond? In simple English, as we all know it, it's a promise. Simple. Similarly, in the financial world also, a bond is nothing but a promise. Now, in Raksha Bandhan, the promise is made between siblings. In case of a bond, a financial bond, a promise is made between two parties. One is a borrower, the other is a lender. Okay. So the borrower is taking some money, the lender is giving them some money. And in exchange of that, what is this promise that I'm going to pay you back is the bond. Simple. What are the features of any promise or any loan? One of you also mentioned loan. What are the features? Can you tell me two features very important? Whenever there is a borrower and lender, what happens? There are conditions apply. Yeah. So first one is interest, obviously. Very correct. There has to be some component of interest involved. And the second component is, hey, Nisha lent me money. It can't be forever. right? So Nisha is like, hey, you've got to pay me back in two years, three years, five years. Got it? 
So they're the main two features of any loan or lending bond relationship is that there is going to be a time period involved in this loan and there is going to be an interest payment. So you understand the basic features of any bond. So any sort of instrument where there is a loan, there is a bond, whoever is the borrower is called a bond issuer. And whoever is the lender is called the bond holder. Okay. Is fixed deposit the type of bond? What do you think now with this definition? Would you think a fixed deposit would be a type of bond? Time period and it's written there, interest payment. So I have two no's and one yes. Let's go maybe get another few answers. Is fixed deposit a type of bond? Is there any sort of a lending relationship here? Does it have a time period? Does it have an interest involved? Oh. Whoever says no, you don't get interest. Then you make a fixed deposit. You do, right? Is there any time period in what? Well, Vaishali, let me put it this way. You are kind of lending to the bank, right? A loan need not be called out as a loan. So what is a fixed deposit? A fixed deposit is the bank saying, listen, Vishali, you have some extra money in your account. Why don't you give me that money? Park it with me. I will give you some extra interest. And that money I can further use for other purposes. Right? Right? So technically it is not a loan, but it is a relationship where they are giving you certain interest over a period of time. And it is Consider it will be very well considered as a as a bond. There's a bond between you and the bank, right? So that's the way I'm looking at it. Don't think of it in the traditional sense of a loan, right? So anywhere where you see a time period and an interest, please in your mind it should click. There is a bond. This is a fixed income relationship. This is a borrower lender relationship. Okay. So in a fixed deposit, who is giving money? You are giving your extra savings to the bank. And who is taking money from you? The bank is taking money from you. Got it? All right. So this is a very simple definition. There are various types of bonds. And I thought today, for today's purpose, we will start with the core type, which, which is defined by who is the borrower. So the first type of bond, which you all must know of, is something called as a government bond. Who is the borrower in a government bond? The government is borrowing. Who is lending? Who can lend? I can lend. Can I? Can I lend to the government? Do you think so? Me, mere mortal Neha. Yeah? Can large companies, institutions lend? Yeah? Can banks lend? Yeah? Right? So a government bond means this bond is a bond with where the borrower is the government and whoever is the bond holder is lending to the government. Why does the government need a bond? Like, why would government be so silly? They'll issue a bond. Why are they borrowing money? For rotation. Hmm? The government is rotating the money and giving it to whom? For development. Yeah, so ideally, ideally, the government runs several projects, right, for the development of the country. So sometimes they require money from you and me, where we will give them some money, they will give us an interest rate and they will run the economy. Very simple, right? Absolute. Now, government bonds also have certain names. These government bonds, when they are very short duration, like government can issue very, very short duration bonds, which are like 91 days bonds. Okay, 91 days would be like a typically like a three month bond, right? These are called T-bills or treasury bills. The government bonds, which are longer than one year are called GSECs government securities. Okay, these are like pet names. If you read them somewhere, you should know this. A government bond comes with negligible risk. Can the government default on making a payment? Chances are very, very high that that's not going to happen, right? If your government is defaulting, nothing else can be saved, right? So the sovereign, it's also called the sovereign, with any sort of a sovereign bond or a government bond is considered as, um, think of it like zero risk like as close as zero risk as can be, right? 
The second party which you would hear or see are bonds issued by municipalities. These could be state governments. These could be local uh, municipalities which are issuing bonds. They are, they are uh, borrowing money. They come with lower risk. Again, the chances of these bonds defaulting are very, very low. So a sample of this could be like an Andhra Pradesh state beverages corporation bond, etc. UP power bond. These are bonds which are typically issued by the state governments, right? Public sector undertaking. Have you all heard of PSU bonds? One of you mentioned tax saving, right? Have you heard of PSU bonds? Very popular with uh, for tax saving. So these are bonds which are issued by companies which are owned 50% plus by the government, right? 51% holder is the government. They come with low risk. Typically, PSU bonds would be medium to long term. What I mean by that is typically they would be anywhere above three years, five years going upwards of that, right? So an REC bond is one of those famous. The Rural Electrification Corporation is a public sector undertaking and their bonds can be seen as tax-free. They issue regular bonds, multiple varieties. And finally, something which is called as corporate bonds. When private companies issue bonds, they come with slightly higher risk. And typically, these bonds could be even starting with a very, very short duration. Right. So now with this, you should know there are government bonds, municipality bonds, PSU bonds, corporate bonds. And all of this is defined by the who is borrowing the money. Out of these, which one do you think would give high interest rates, like high returns? Out of these four, which ones do you think would give very high returns? And the hint is right there, actually, right? The corporate bonds, right? So typically higher risk, higher returns. Okay, so today we're going to spend some energy also looking at practically some of these PSU and corporate bonds. I'll take you through some platforms and have a look at it. Let's move on to the very famous discussion around FD versus bonds. So we asked this question in the beginning and I thought, well, there is no such perfect answer, but it's good to see the comparison on different factors, what works best, right? So if we were to start comparing them based on return, typically, and this is going by very current scenario, an FD on an average would be giving anywhere between 5 to 7.5%. You can consider bonds to give you at least 1 to 2% higher than what an FD rate would be. Right. So if you're making plus 1% or above, that is um, that can be considered as a decent enough rate that you would get from a bond. Right. So slightly higher returns than FD. Risk. Now fixed deposits the risk on fixed deposit depends on the bank, right? And the risk related to the bond depends on the financial steadiness of the borrower. I told you it's a borrower-lender relationship. So for example, a government bond, the risk would be very low, right? A government bank, a lot of people like to make FDs or have accounts with government banks because of the same reason. One big difference is that fixed deposits come with an insurance backup of approximately 5 lakh rupees. There is no such insurance cover under bonds. So in that sense, FDs might be slightly lower risk than investing in bonds. Having said that, if you look at government bonds or municipality bonds, that could also be considered as fairly low risk. Next very important difference is the liquidity. How easily can I access this money? Right. So when it comes to FDs, you can withdraw early, but there will be a penalty. Right. There will be a small penalty, approximately 1% that you would have to pay if you want to exit from the FD. In case of bonds, most of them come the lock-in period, but some of these bonds are also available on the stock exchange. Okay, Which means if I'm not able to wait till the expiry, till the entire time period, I can go and sell it on the stock exchange. Right. One caveat here, not everybody can, it is not as easy to sell bonds on the stock exchange because not too many people are buying and selling bonds on the stock exchange. Okay, so you might want to sell, but there might be no buyer. So that is one little tricky part when it comes to bonds, which is why it requires a little bit more deeper understanding and knowledge to start investing in bonds. And finally, the very important big difference is the minimum amount. Why FDs are so popular? Because it's a mass product. It starts with as low as 1,000 rupees. We all can make FDs. doesn't require too much money, right? Bonds, on the other hand, are slightly premium products. Why you and I don't know much about it is because till some time back, bonds would start with anywhere above 
2 lakh, 5 lakh rupees plus. These have traditionally been rich people's safe portfolio products, right? 10 lakh plus kind of investments. Now there are bonds which are coming in the market, which are 10,000 rupees, um, even slightly lower than that. So who is bond suited for? Someone who can take slightly higher risk and also someone who has slightly higher available surplus. If you're someone who has built enough FDs and now you're looking to um, do more, you still don't want to take too much risk. There is a first stock market, but you're like, no, I still don't want to do, put all my money in the stock market. I don't want to take that much risk. Between these two layers is where you can plug bonds in, right? Make sense? So this is for those people who have additional money, who've made enough deposits and who would like to take slightly more risk and make better returns. All right. So with that put aside, we know it's a borrower-lender relationship. We know different types of bonds. We know who should be investing in bonds versus FD. So there's no clear-cut clear winner. I would say if you're still starting building your portfolio, stick to FDs. And if you want to really, you have some which is already in the safe, safe portfolio and you want to kind of diversify within that, you can look at expanding into bonds. Now let's do some terms to know. So I took a snapshot. I will share with, you know this platform as well with you. So you can go and explore on your own. And this is a snapshot of a very recent bond, uh, which I saw. So I'm going to run you through some key terms that you'll keep coming across, right? So the first major thing upfront, whose, whose bond is it? Who is the bond issuer? State Bank of India, very clear. What is the minimum investment that I need to make in this bond? Two lakh rupees, it's right there. So no great shakes there, right? Simple, this is easy. So state bank is right, two lakh rupees, 200,000, right? State bank has issued a bond. Then you will typically see something like this. It says rating, okay? So a rating basically defines the stability. How stable is this particular bond? Remember that I said that it depends on the stability of the borrower. Now you and I, how do we judge that stability? We look at something called as a credit rating. Who issues this credit rating? These are independent agencies which are regulated by SEBI. Some of the big popular ones in India are Crisel, ICRA. And you can see that it says this is a triple A. Triple A stable by India rating. Uh, AAA stable by ICRA, right? So these are credit rating agencies. And typically, when you're starting out, you should start with something which is a AAA bond. That's the highest, like the best possible label, right? Um, if you want to take slightly higher risk, you can go down to AA. I would say A plus would be the lowest that I would suggest going to. Um, having said that, there have been multiple rounds of conversations and debate around, you know, how valid these ratings are, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're really starting out, I would suggest go with an issuer, which is either a government or a state government kind of an issuer, like a state bank of India is a PSU, largest bank in India, um, fairly stable. The government is not going to let it go bankrupt, et cetera. So a triple A rating and no name, a PSU name would be a good way to get started. As you keep evolving and you enjoy this space, you can actually go. There are lots and lots of data where you can read their cash flows. You can read their financial statements to also get a comfort that whether financially these uh, companies are stable or not. Right. So the second thing that we check is the credit rating. Triple A rating means high risk, low risk. So SBI's bond with a triple A rating is fairly low risk till now. Okay. But let's keep reading. Minimum risk. Right. Let's keep reading. Coupon. What does a coupon mean? Coupon is a fancy word for the interest percentage. Uh, what is the interest that I'm going to get on this particular bond? 7.7%. And the next thing which I check is how long is this bond? So the maturity of this bond is 2038. So it's approximately a 15 year bond, very really long, long bond. And when I'm investing in a bond, please remember that whatever amount I invest, typically, I will keep getting interest payments throughout. Okay, when I look at the interest frequency and at the end of the term, at the at maturity, my principal money, what I had invested will be given back to me. That's how typically bonds work. If I've invested 2 lakh rupees, through the duration of this 15 years, they will keep paying me interest. 
at the end of 15 years they will give me my 2 lakh rupees back that is also called the principal theek hai another thing which i want to leave you with okay i'm going to leave you with some lots and lots of terms some terms that you might have not heard of so every bond has a face value think of a face value as the most basic or the first price of this bond okay even before it went and and it got listed or other people wanted to buy it this is the first original price of the bond so if you have to buy one bond you will look at the face value okay the face value is when the bond was issued initially what was the price so in this case the one thing that you must remember is that the coupon or the interest is always calculated on the face value okay so if the bond's face value here was 1000 rupees okay if the bond's face value here was 1000 rupees how much interest would i get should we all calculate hmm should we open a little excel and keep this also ready if the bond's face value was 1000 rupees how much interest would i get let me open a sheet for all of us and we can all calculate there together so if the bond face value is 1000 and the coupon is 7.7% i'm going to get 77 rupees of interest every year is that easy to calculate so you always for the interest calculation you always look for the face value okay any doubts questions here all right awesome so for those who find it difficult just use the calculator simple i have the excel handy so i will always keep opening that so i have given you three major terms now let's look at few others every bond will state the frequency of interest which means how often will you be paid annually means that they will pay me my 77 rupees if it is a 1000 rupee bond 77 rupees every year i will get uh, that's the interest that i'll receive sometimes bonds can have a monthly frequency they can have a quarterly frequency some bonds also are pay out right at the end they might not pay you any interest during and they pay the entire thing right at the end okay it's a cumulative bond it will give you all entire interest with the principal at the end of the time period okay and finally there are two more words here which i want to highlight something called as security and something called as seniority now these are slightly advanced terms the others you might have still heard but these terms um, will help you differentiate bonds easily security means does this bond have any backing of assets so when it says unsecured this means that this bond or this borrowing does not have any assets behind it so in case something happens to sbi they will not be able to sell any assets to make payments for this bond so would an unsecured bond be risky or not did you understand what i said Should I repeat, or is everybody with me? When it says it's an unsecured bond, it means there is no assets backing it up, so it could be risky. Absolutely. So if I was to tell you one bond is uh, same SBI issues a secured bond and SBI issues an unsecured bond, which one is riskier for me? The unsecured bond. Okay. Simple. Unsecured will be risky. Let's talk about the other one, seniority. बोरिंग हो रहा है तो इफ यू ऑल रिमेम्बर वेन वी ऑल वर सीनियर्स इन स्कूल बैक इन स्कूल ऑफ कॉलेज वी ऑलवेज गॉट प्रायोरिटी बिकॉज वाई बिकॉज यूर सीनियर्स इट्स एज सिंपल एज दैट इफ इट्स अ सीनियर डेट इट विल गेट प्रायोरिटी इन केस ऑफ एनी ट्रबल ओके विच मीन्स वॉट एवर एसेट्स गेट लिक्विडेटेड अ सीनियर डेट विल बी पेड ऑफ फर्स्ट इफ इट इज अ सबॉर्डिनेट डेट इफ इट्स ए सबॉर्डिनेट एंड नॉट सीनियर दैट इज अ सेकेंडरी डेट that first senior debt will be paid remember and then the subordinate debt will be paid so is senior better than subordinate yes simple so now can you all read this now tell me does this look like a bond worth investing your money in by the way i'm not recommending i'm just showing you whether you all can read this and understand this 
What do you think? Does it look like a bond if you add two lakh rupees? It's SBI, high credit rating, giving you better coupon. Maybe if your money was kept in FDs, which was at say six percent, this is giving you seven point seven percent. Might be worth considering. All right. I'm not selling this. I'm just telling you that now you can read it. You become smarter. All right. Let's play a game. I've put out a bond here. Okay. And I want you all to start answering my questions. Take two seconds to read it. Okay. And I'm going to put out some questions and I want you all to get active. Be awake, be alive and start answering in the chat box. Who is the issuer of the bond? Muthoot Finance. Has anybody here heard of Muthoot Finance? I oh, heard of, must have heard of. What is the minimum investment that I need to do? Gold loans, correct. Largest gold lender in the country. Oh. Answers are telling me all are awake. Huh? What is the credit rating of this bond? Very good, Ramya. Fastest finger first. So, double A plus? Double A plus is better, triple A is better. Double A plus is better, triple A is better. Triple A is better. But double A plus is also quite good. Huh? But triple A is better. Absolutely. Great. Next. What is the interest? Ah, Shabash, Sabitne smart. Hmm. So interestingly, this bond has got multiple series. Okay. So when we'll do a little bit more, we'll see. It says 8.1% is the earning that you can get. Effective yield, I will just show you in some time what yield means, right? So 8.6 also, correct. So we'll share, I'll share how this would work. Okay, we'll have a look at this. But yeah, it's in the range of 8.1 to 8.6. Duration of this bond. Sixty-one months, right? So approximately five years. Very good. Is it backed by assets? Is it got a high priority repayment? Can you all read this? When you see it anywhere on the screen now? Could you read this before you walked into the class? Now you just become smarter in like half an hour. Right? So Muthoot Finance is borrowing money. Right? Feeling better? Feeling better? At least I can read this and now make a decision. It's secured, it's senior. Redeemable NCD is just a word, I'll, I'll tell you what it means, but redeemable basically means that it will get, you will get the money back during the duration of the bond. There are some non-redeemable which continue for posterity, like they continue till the company uh, is alive. So typically most of the bonds are redeemable bonds that some money will be given back, right? What is series? So there would be, so within a bond, Okay, so Muthur, for example, here has come out with a bond. They could have multiple options. And a series could be like, uh, maybe it depends on the duration. They have issued some bonds which are for 27 months, some bonds which are for 36 months. So there's a series, there are varied options. Then some bonds could be giving you monthly return, monthly interest payout, some could be quarterly. So like that, that's a series. Okay, so we will see this. That's what Nisha, a series would mean. Right? I have one more input here, which I want to share with you. So while we're learning, let's keep adding to our learning. So one input here, when you read something very interesting here, two things, it says bond public issue. Okay. And then it also gives you some dates here. You all can see 8th Feb to 3rd March. Okay. So interestingly, just like stocks, you all, whoever knows about stocks, there is something called an IPO. We did a session also around this, if you all remember. There is something called an IPO when the company is first coming out on the stock exchange, okay? A public issue. Similarly, in case of bonds also, there is an IPO, which is called a primary issue or a first time the bond public issue, right? This is the first time this bond is being launched. Got it? When I'm investing through the, at this time, it's called a primary issue investing. I'm investing during an IPO. And this IPO is only going to last till 3rd of March, 
Okay. After this, the bond will close. Then this bond will get listed on the stock exchange. Okay. Just the way there are stocks on the stock exchange, there are also bonds on the stock exchange. Right. There's an entire bonds market as well. And if I now go and buy it off the stock exchange, this is called a secondary issue. This bond has already been issued. Now I'm buying it from the stock exchange. Okay. So these are words which you should remember a primary issue. Am I buying it during an IPO or am I buying it off the stock exchange, which is a secondary issue. Most of the times as first time investors, I would recommend that you start with a primary issue. Right? Typically, these primary issues will also come with a very low price. As you evolve as investors, you can look at considering secondary issues or buying these bonds off the market, right? off the stock exchange. Little, and typically, those are also slightly uh, higher priced, like they'll be at a minimum of 10 lakhs and so on. Right. All right. How do you feel till now? Energy levels? Is it as boring? Let's go. How does it affect the investment? High energy, good, insightful. All right. Till now, Priyanka has a question. Priyanka, you want to unmute and ask me how does it affect the investment? Sorry, you didn't understand. Um. Yeah. Actually, so when you said the the primary issue and the secondary issue, I mean, uh, what is the difference for me as an investor? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Good question. So when I'm investing in a primary issue. Typically, the price of the bond would be at the face value. Remember, I just told you the face value. It's like the first price. Now, when this bond is gone and it's listed on the stock exchange, here the price might fluctuate based on demand and supply. Right. So that's where a little bit of difference will happen when it gets listed on the stock exchange. The price might fluctuate. That's the main difference. That's the main okay. difference. Got it. Yeah. But the uh, but the confirmation or but the interest that is uh, that is. Correct. Written there up to like features to remain the same okay that's okay, what your question is right the features yeah. of the bond will remain the same wo abhi bhi uski rating wahi hai Malab, wo product is exactly same it's just the price in ipo i'm getting it at face value once it's listed now it's now this 100 rupee bond or this 1000 rupee bond basis demand and supply could be selling to me at 1050 or 950 so i've got to be a little more aware of how it works in the bond market that's why I said okay. that as beginner investors, I would suggest sticking to the primary issue. Okay. Yeah. And is there a way we can uh, we can see a list of yes. all the I will bonds? Show you. I will show you everything. Okay. Okay. I will. I will. Getting there. All right. Okay. Is the interest always on, also on face value? Interest is always on face value, Geeta. Okay. Interest is always on face value. Remember that, irrespective of whatever market value it is. Okay. All right. We are going to touch quickly upon these four things that you might have heard. You all have heard of tax-free bonds. Anyone in the room has ever heard of tax-free bonds? No? Never heard? Nobody is... ELSS or infra maybe? No? ELSS is a mutual fund. That's a tax-saving mutual fund. That's a separate product. I have no's and yes. So generally, who would have heard is Thoda uh, Jo traditional investors. If you have any traditional investors, uh, not all government bonds are tax-free. No, there are separately tax-free bonds. So one thing which I want to clarify is that there is no such thing as um, everything in bonds is not tax-free. There is a proper taxation. But there are some bonds which are specifically called as tax-free bonds. Just the way there is not all your fixed deposits, are they all tax-free? You still pay tax on the interest, right? On your fixed deposit. But there are some which are called five-year tax-saving FD. You might have heard. There's a tax-saving FD separately. Similarly, there are tax-free bonds. Tax-free bonds basically means whatever interest I'm earning, I don't have to pay tax on. Otherwise, the interest you earn on your bonds is taxable. Just the way interest you earn on your FD is also taxable. Right. Generally, these tax-free bonds would be issued by public sector units and generally they will have minimum of five-year duration. So REC, PFC, Power Finance Corporation, these are like popularly known, NHAI, they are popular to be issuing these tax-free bonds. Recently, there has not been an issue, otherwise I would have shown you. Another type of bonds, we might have heard, capital gains bond or 54 EC bonds. Okay. These are bonds in case you have sold a property. 
okay you might have heard that if i have made a gain i can avoid to pay tax on that gain if i reinvest that gain either into another property or i invest into these capital gain bonds again these bonds are issued by psus the uh, these you can the capital gain exemption is capped at 50 lakhs and you have to invest in these bonds within 6 months of selling right so here you avoid paying tax on the capital gains tax free bond you avoid paying tax on the interest sovereign gold bond this you all would have heard of have you all heard of sovereign gold bond sgb 50 people in the room everybody must have heard at least i know girls would have heard today hearing okay they were hearing today we will do a gold session also for you okay so sovereign gold bond is the is break down the name now you all know what is a bond you know what is sovereign sovereign is anything which is issued by the government gold means it's investing in gold bond means that again there's a borrowing lending relationship right so there is a time period and there would be some interest component what is my gain so these are bonds which are issued by the rbi the price of this bond is linked to the price of gold over and above that so if today i am buying this bond this bond would be issued at the same price at what gold is available right maybe at 6000 rupees i can buy one bond and this bond has a maturity of 8 years after 8 years whatever is the price of gold i will get that back this is tax free and there is also an interest component on these bonds of 2.5% every year on whatever you are invested okay which is why they are very very lucrative for those who want to invest in gold but don't want to hold gold as physical asset you can consider these because it's the only gold product which is tax free so buying gold is not the same as buying an sgb no you are only investing in the appreciation or the growth of price from gold you this bond does not give you any gold physical gold in return it's a financial transaction you buy the bond you sell the bond you get the money in your account from that money you want to buy physical gold or you want to buy a car your choice whatever do whatever what's the taxable part here so if i have safe invested uh, in one bond ramya at 6000 rupees after 8 years it became 8000 because there's an appreciation there's a capital gain here okay there's a gain of 2000 rupees that gain is 100% exempt there is no tax i have to pay on that gain that is part 1 the second part is every year the government is paying me 2.5% interest on the 6000 rupees i invested that interest is taxable so two parts whatever i gained is tax free the interest i am earning is taxable got it if you like to know anything more about sgbs we can do a session on gold investing please drop a note to vidya's team and i will set up a, a session on gold investing as well right unless uh you all have already got that on the calendar finally what you just saw muthoot finance it says a non convertible debenture and ncd okay very important to know what kind of bonds are ncds or what is debentures debentures are again um you know like a promise a, a loan it's like a bond only think of it like a subset of a bond only which is issued typically by companies public sector companies or private sector companies and this is a way in which they are borrowing money okay a non convertible debenture basically means that this debenture or this bond cannot be converted into equity at any later point of time you cannot just uh, there are convertible debentures which from debt you can convert them into equity ncd is means that it cannot be it will always be a fixed income product basically that's what it means typically these will be shorter duration the risk factor associated with ncds is linked to the risk of the borrower right so here you need to be a little bit more careful when you are investing in ncds that's the point i'm making be a little bit more careful they're lucrative but be a little bit more careful who is issuing the ncd that's okay divya we'll keep building on the knowledge right so it's another just for now just think that's another name for a bond okay this gsex is a part type of bond psu bond tax free bond ncd is also another kind of bond which is issued by private companies right like muthoot finance issued a ncd okay yes reshu sovereign repeat please the gain so 
I said, if the price of gold you invested in is at 6,000 and after eight years, it becomes 8,000, you have made a gain of 2,000 rupees. 6,000 is 8,000, so 2,000 ka gain hai. Tak hai. Okay. This yes. gain, this 2,000 rupees, there's no tax you have to pay. So when you withdraw the money, when you get the money back, there's no gain, capital gains tax here. That's what it is. So that's but, why it is tax free. Yeah, but in between, uh, there is some locking period or kind Eight of... Years. Okay, if in between I need the amount, I can't, uh, you know, take it, right? There are two ways. Uh, there's actually one major way that you can sell it on the stock exchange. These are all okay. listed on the exchange. But there, then the capital gains will apply. So, for okay. example, you sold it at four years and yeah. 6,000 becomes 7,000. That 1,000 you will pay gain. Uh, that tax you will pay on that gain. Okay, right. But we can do separate on gold. Huh? And if you all want to do, we can do a proper separate session. All right. There's more. There's more. I want to do some practical work as well with you guys. Right. So how do I choose bonds? So till now, um, one of the important things which I wanted to establish is that it's not, it's not some magical word. It's basically a loan. It's very easy. The few things that you need to check is how stable is this company who is issuing a bond? How do I check that? Through a credit rating of the bond. Now I know you know what is a credit rating. The other thing which I'll check is whether it's secured or unsecured. Is this bond backed by any sort of assets or is it like without assets they are issuing this bond? So a secured is obviously lesser risk. I will check the maturity period and try to map it to my requirement. So if I'm looking for a, for my, my time period for investing is five years, I'll probably not want to invest in a 10 year long bond. I want to look, invest in a bond, which is three years, four years, five years, something like that. Right. And finally, compare returns to alternative, which basically means that when you're looking at your interest, do compare it with the next obvious option, which is FD, right? Your next obvious option is FD. If everything else is similar. How much are you making on the FD versus how much will you make on this bond? If it is at least 1% above and you're willing to take slightly amount, higher amount of risk, you can go ahead and choose a bond. Right? Geeta is asking a question. If the interest is always on face value, what is the idea behind buying it on the stock market? Aren't you all Yes, if you, do, if you don't miss out on the IPO, then absolutely, Geeta. So you apply for the bond. There's a limit, right? If you get it, it's just the way in an IPO you bid for a stock, you get allotment. Similarly, you apply for it in the bond public issue. You get the allotment. Very good. You miss it. For example, if you didn't know that Muthut Finance was open right now till 3rd of March and you wanted to invest in a bond later, you would have to go and buy it on the stock market. right? You would have no other option. Does the purpose of the bond issue have any relevance? Not really. I mean, very frankly, you can't go back and track it. So not really. I would not put so much importance on that. I would focus more on these as features. Right. Okay. So I thought, why don't we do some practical work? You all want to do some practical work? Maybe I'll show you uh, one platform. We have some time and then maybe another if we have more time. Cool. Yes, please. All righty. All right. So I am going to share with you a platform called the fixed income you all can see my screen okay there are now there are multiple bond purchasing platforms um i'm sharing just one of them okay so i'm sharing this i'll tell you why because it gives a fairly large variety of bonds so it's easy for me to explain to you so this is where i took the snapshot from Right. And I'll show you. So can you see all now when you see this page, is it easier to understand when I click on this bonds, it gives me multiple types of bonds. And I think by now you should be able to kind of understand PSU bonds, bank bonds, government bonds, NBFC bonds. NBFCs are non-banking financial companies, right? Uh, Tax-free bonds, private bonds, sovereign bonds. These are all government, state government, central government. 54 EC. So you, you should be able to understand this. Is this the top of this clear for all of you? I thought, why not click on the bonds that we saw, right? So they have, let's say we click on this State Bank of India. Okay. It's giving me all the details about this bond. 
the rating is right here okay it's a high return bond i am eligible okay now let's see something interesting the face value of the bond is can you all see the face value 1 lakh right now we are looking at this bond on feb 21st what was the issue date of this bond so this is specially for geeta 19 jan okay and uh, so the first thing which strikes me is i am not buying in a primary issue as so a primary issue would typically be like one week two weeks right so that's the first thing this is not a bond which i am buying in ipo i am buying this secondary from the market okay what is the coupon 7.7 can you all read everything here maturity is 2038 so what is the remaining period 14 years 10 months 27 days how where how frequently annually i will get interest is it tax free no okay other things for now we can park it's a unsecured bond so till now till here it's all clear easy okay now let's come down when i go to place the order i see some more terms first tell me how how energetic are you can i explain one more concept to all of you only one more only if you all want to learn little advance then i will explain that one concept ha huh? kar sakte ho absorb karoge theek hai okay and this is specifically for secondary bonds sometimes you might be given these kind of options which is why i'm sharing this right so here what has happened ladies is that the face value was say 1 lakh rupees today when i go to buy this bond it is slightly higher okay say if it was 100 rupees it is 100.62 now okay so but there is something called face value and there is something called market price this is the price of the bond so have if the price has gone up do you think there is demand for this bond what do you say if the price you all know economics if the everybody wants to buy something the price will go up or the price will go down what is it price will go up absolutely right so clearly it seems that there has been demand for this bond okay so now i want to share one more term with you ignore everything else on this screen i want to explain and i will open my excel and uh, run you through one more term which you all must know especially when you are investing in a secondary bond something which is already available on the market right so let me open my excel so let's say this bond had a face value of 100 rupees okay we'll keep it simple the coupon rate 7.7% right does anybody else remember with me 7.7 so say every year i have how much interest i am going to get 7 rupees we are told that theek hai 7.7 rupees is the annual interest when i go and buy it from the secondary market the price is higher the price is higher but the interest i earn geeta now this is where it becomes important the interest i will earn is 7.7 rupees fixed irrespective so you are not earning 7.7% of 100.62 no you earn 7.7% of what you bought the the face value not what you bought the face value right now what is my return your return is 7.7 divided by 100.62 which is slightly lesser than if i had got it at the time that it was originally brought to the public this my dear ladies is called yield whenever you read this word yield or ytm yield to maturity something like this this number will be different from coupon if you are buying the bond not at face value but at a different price supposing the price of this bond was had come down demand is less look at your yield you are earning say 7.7 but because you bought it at a lower price your yield has gone up do you understand this this is the fun part one little fun part which i wanted to explain is this clear so when you were reading yield the word yield right either it will be coupon or when you read this word yield and you see two different numbers coupon is different and yield is different what should your mind say 
that maybe your buying price, you're not buying it at the face value. You understand this? All right. So here, simple words, if I go back now, now can you see this yield? It is lesser than 7.7. .7. Why? Because I'm buying at higher price. Forget everything else now. Right now, you're all, when you want to buy, and actually you come for one-on-one, -on -one, I will explain. Okay. Otherwise, for now, this is good enough. Most of the bonds will also give you a nice description how your interest will be paid out on this. You know, every they'll say if you invest 2 lakhs, then this is how your cash flow looks like. So it gives you very good comparison as well. Right. So this was one thing which I wanted to share with all of you. And the last two points before we move to questions, how do you start? You can invest in three ways into bonds. I would suggest either going the first two way, either through a broker, because for bonds, you need a DMAT account. Okay, the bonds will be parked in your DMAT account. That's compulsory. So either through a broker, any of the brokers you have, ICICI Direct, HDFC, they all would have IFL, Motilal, Oswal, Coin, Zeroda, they all would have. Or like this platform, which I showed you, like the fixed income, Golden Pie, Bonds India, multiple platforms are also there now. The advantage, only advantage in bond platforms, like the one I showed you, is that they, because this is an area of specialization, they tend to have a much larger variety of bonds. Uh, and you can very well hold, buy from here and then hold it in any of your DMAT accounts. Doesn't matter. The third way, which now the government is actively working, and I think in the next few years, you all will be learning more about bonds, is because government is actively launching platforms like RBI Retail Direct, NSE Go Bid. I don't know if you all have heard of these names till now. They are hidden secrets like Chupyu Dulhan till now, but they are really actively pushing uh, small investors to start investing in bonds through these platforms. You can go and explore the RBI Retail Direct allows you to invest in government bonds. Having said that, government bonds, FD rates currently are very similar. You might get maybe 1% or extra on government bonds. Uh, higher yields are definitely in the corporate bond segment, like I showed you, or the PSU kind of uh, category where you can get 2 to 3% extra over and above your fixed deposits. And the process is fairly simple. Go do selection of your bond or NCD. Put in your KYC, PAN card, DMAT account as a must. If you are investing in an IPO, you will invest through UPI. You can do that up to 5 lakh rupees. If you're investing in a very large amount, secondary bonds, 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs, you will have to go offline. You have to route it via your net banking. So there is a different process for that. But the whole intention of showing you this was that to get started with a safe portfolio, you have more options, not just restricted to fixed deposit. Um, quick taxation rules. Like I said, taxi, it's fully taxable. Your interest income will be added to your um, overall income and will be taxable as per your slab. Capital gains, if you're buying it on the secondary market, would be uh, dependent on how long you hold the bond, short-term or long-term capital gains. If it's a listed bond, less than one year you're holding it, then whatever gain you made is as per tax slab. If you're holding it for more than one year, then you're going to get 10% flat or 20% with indexation. Similarly, with unlisted bond, it will be a three-year time period. So this is something you can just take a snapshot, refer to later at the time once you, you know, kind of bought the bond and sold it. But if you are buying the bond like through a public issue, like that Muthoot Finance public issue, you hold it till maturity. The only tax you should be concerned about is this one. This is what will get taxed. Right? There is no component of capital gains in that. And with that, I close the session for today. Happy to pick up questions. We have some, actually we know we don't have time, but uh, still if there are questions, uh, five to seven minutes, happy to take that. Please, 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 the ones who still not come and book their sessions one-on-one, -on -one, um, please use the opportunity, whatever questions you might have in case you want to get your financial life in order, scan this code. The link also goes to you in the follow-up sessions. Please book it and uh, we're there, happy to help. Hey, Neha, just a question. Um, so when uh, so when I look at that the website that you showed earlier, I click on the bank bonds and there are like, like just from the state bank, there are three to four types of bonds, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there. 
So how do we choose between these? I mean, I, I can see the interest rate is different. That's that that can be one thing. But apart mm-hmm. from it, like why are there multiple banks and also like which type should we go for for the first time investment point of view? So my point of view would be that go with the stable. So if I would start, I'd start with something like a state bank for obvious reasons. Uh, the second point that I would look at is definitely the rating, which I just showed you. So all the points I mentioned, right, match the time period. So why, firstly, why are they issuing? Each of them wants money. That's why they're issuing bonds. Right? They're just borrowers. right? So compare, apart from comparing the interest, you compare the rating. Can you see the rating? Sabki rating hai likhi hai. Double A plus, double A plus, right? Time yeah. period alag hai. So ek aapki SBI ki bond, which is two years. Ek aapki SBI ki bond, which is one year. एक में आपको 7.7 मिल रहा है एक में आपको 8.5 मिल रहा है सो so, अगर आप, मेरे पास अगर दो साल है इन्वेस्ट करना है तो मैं इसको इधर भी डाल सकती हूँ और अगर मेरे को लगता नहीं वन वन करके दिस इज गिविंग मी बेटर रिटर्न आई एल चूज दैट सो दीज आर द वेज यू विल कीप बाइफोकेटिंग एंड शॉर्ट लिस्टिंग सो वट एवर रीजन आई टोल्ड यू क्रेडिट रेटिंग सिक्योर्ड अनसिक्योर्ड टाइम पीरियड एंड यू गोट मेक श्योर दैट द रेट दैट यूर गेटिंग इज कंपेरेबल टू द नेक्स्ट बेस्ट ऑल्टरनेटिव सो देर इज नथिंग and like within the same bank so again talking about the same state bank uh, yeah. so sbi will have different ratings for the different bonds yes so it doesn't depend the rating doesn't depend on the bo- uh, bank but on the type of the bond yes so you okay. see some of them might be secured some might be unsecured unsecured so they would give a rating to the instrument having if you know about the if that's why i said in the beginning if you go with something like a state bank or a psu that anyway gives you some security right that the borrower is not going to not repay then you check the instrument what is the rating of the instrument then you compare the returns you compare the duration you compare whether it is going to be a secured unsecured and then you make a decision Got so it. it's a big that's world out there it's almost like choosing a mutual fund so it is not that simple uh but yeah that would be the way that one can approach it so this will at least give you that single snapshot view okay thank you thank you so much neha i know we overshot the uh, time but then i think it was a very very interesting session as always so uh, uh farisha pity launched the second poll uh people please take about 10 seconds to quickly answer these questions do you think this session has helped you understand how bonds work its types and how to get started with investing in bonds yes i have clarity and feel confident that around 80% of the audience who are you know really feeling better partially new things are brought to my attention great there are about uh, 5% of the people who are still not certain do not worry the same session i mean in fact all our uh, sessions are available in youtube uh, under she knows money playlist you can always go back see the sessions once again and if you still have any questions as uh, neha said you can fix up a one on one session with them or you can write to she knows money we will help you connect with neha right and thank you all so much once again for uh, you know investing your time in yet another wonderful session with she knows money and we'll uh, come up with another session next week for all of you stay tuned and uh, do follow us on all the social media channels look out for our emailers and refer to your friends as well let them also benefit from all of these sessions Thank you ladies thank you all so much thank you neha yes divya i am laughing and smiling yeah <laughs> divya divya was on full uh, you know can i, can I ask one question can i ask one question please yes yeah, yes you do yeah, you have i need to know see for example sbi they have shares also they have bond also so mm. how do i decide whether i buy this particular company share or bond this is just a silly question maybe no yeah. no 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 please ek to ye ye kabhi nahi bolna please don't follow it up it's not a silly question it is just okay. uh, i can either lend to them as a lender 
if you're lending them see think of it like this i run a business womanista i can yeah. offer you a bond or i can say come and become an equity partner with me be an investor what is okay. the difference Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Partner, the goal, in or, one place uh, you get some stability, but I will say, oh, you will only earn seven percent from me. If you think Womanista is going to be a booming business, great business, you become an investor in the investor in the business. I'll not give you anything guaranteed. But when we make money, you make much bigger money. That's what it is. So, what sure. should you choose? Which path you should choose? Company is the same. Depends on your risk appetite. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank absolutely. you. All right.